Hi. Hello, everyone. It's good to see you, although I don't see you, but I'm imagining that I see you. I hope you're having a great day today. It's so far, it's going pretty good here. I've been very productive. Um, so let's see, we've got Pamela Matthews, hi, Deb Henson, hi. Deb, I hope you don't mind, but I'm gonna show a picture of your sweater to everybody. Um, Pamela Matthews. Oh, Pamela, are you seeing me now? Oh, yes, okay, great. Uh, Scott Tigner, hi, Jane Hart, Francoise. And am I saying it correctly now, Francoise? Not Francois. That's a man. A Francois is a woman. I'm learning something new every day. Um, Jean Bishop, Nancy Creedmore. Hi, Nancy. Um, Luana Hendricks, Teresa Brown, Susan Marie, Nancy Drake, Sylvia Earle, Bonnie Davis, Susan Powell. Diane Eddy. So um, I have some written questions from the Ravelry group, and I also want to show my sweater. It's done. And I'll answer those questions and whatever you want to ask today. Plus, I have some things to share about um, the sock knit along that's coming up and the next sweater. So um, let's get started. First of all, I did just finish the video. It's not uploaded yet. I still have a little bit more editing to do about how to do those short rows across the back of the shawl collar. So I had to knit a little um, sample here, and then I've got the short rows. This video is completed. I just need to do a little more editing on it. There's a couple bloopers that I need to cut out, and then it'll be uploaded this afternoon when we're done here. I'll have a chance to get it uploaded. Then I'm going to do the same thing in uh, one color brioche and two color brioche so people can do see how to do the wrap and turns over here on the edges. The wrap and turns are on the edges. And also I should tell a little bit about the ratio, how to pick up on a vertical, horizontal, a vertical, diagonal, and horizontal edge. So I have all of that in there. And so you'll get that. I hope that helps a lot. Then some people have asked about um, the zipper version, which is in the works with a different collar. This is Deb Henson in her sweater. I just printed this off of what she posted on Facebook. She hasn't installed the zipper yet, but her button band is half the width of the, what you would normally do. So it's an inch and a half instead of three inches. And then a completely different shawl or collar. This has no short rows in the back. This shawl uh, collar lays back and the zipper will go all the way up to the end of the collar. So she graciously test knitted this for me. And I think she's very happy with it. You can tell by how she looks. And um, so that those written directions are going to come out real soon. And I'm going to give directions for hand stitching the zipper in as well as machine zipping. Uh, machine, did I say hand zipping? Hand stitching and, hand, and machine stitching the zipper in. You can do it either way, whatever works for you. Depends on the stitch pattern that you're using. My preference is if it can be invisible to machine knit it, but if it can't be invisible, then you hand stitch it. Machine knit it, machine stitch it. Today's one of those days, you know? Okay, so let's see. Let's start out with questions. There was one question that I missed from last week. I think she entered it right after I read the questions. So this is from Sweet Jane 11, and she's doing brioche uh, cuffs on her sweater. And she wants to know, she says, I'm nearing the end of my first sleeve, three inches from the wrist area. I want to do brioche for the cuffs ribbing. When I was at the bottom of the sweater ribbing, you helped me fit the brioche in with the stockinette stitches by decreasing one stitch every inch all the way to the end of the row to compensate for the size and stretch of the brioche stitches. I'm concerned if I do that in the area of the wrist, that the wrist stitches will be too tight. How should I handle this? Well, what I would do is I would take your sweater, since you've already got the bottom done right, and you've got your brioche on the bottom, 
and I would take your bottom ribbing and put it around your wrist and count how many stitches you need. Okay. And then you'll know how many stitches you need to have in brioche around your wrist. Now, if it's more stitches than what you have on your sweater, you'll have to add some stitches. You can do uh, make ones or knit front and back, whatever you want to do. Um, if you do knit front and back, I would do the back part, the knit front in what will be a knit stitch and the knit back in what will be a purl stitch. And that should work fine. Now, also keep in mind, brioche requires for you to go down in needle size if you're changing from one fabric to another. If you're just knitting a brioche scarf, you can use whatever needle size you want. But if you're changing from a one stitch pattern to brioche, like stockinette to brioche, you need to compensate in the change in size of brioche stitches. Brioche stitches are much larger worked on the same needle than stockinette stitch. For example, I worked this sweater on a US 3 and I did the brioche on a US 1 and I still had to compensate a little bit um, to make the brioche fit. I had to remove uh, one stitch down here uh, every inch or couple inches to make the brioche fit so it wouldn't flare out around the bottom of the sweater. So you have to keep that in mind. Does that answer that question? I hope that answers that. Another one that comes up is people want to know how to bind off in brioche. Now, what I did on my sweater, I bound off on this sleeve, just a standard bind off in knit one, purl one, just the standard bind off. So you can see I used the gray for binding off. On this side, I did a, the it Italian bind off, which is invisible. And you can see it on this side. So there's the comparison of the two sides and you can do it however you want. I chose this style to do to bind off my collar because I like the fact that it frames it for this particular project and it's personal preference. It's whatever you want to do. But I liked that gray framing on the edge. If you want to do the Italian bind off, which is the invisible one like this, um, then you could, I would do it on a little swatch and figure out how much yarn you need because it does not take as much yarn as you think it's going to. Um, if you're going to do a big, long thing like this, you might be freaking out that you're going to be wearing your yarn out before you get to it. It really doesn't take as much as you think. So what I would do is measure out a length of yarn that's measured, that you know how long it is, bind off a series of stitches with it, like maybe like 20 stitches, and see how much yarn did you use then you know how many stitches you have to bind off around here and you'll know how much of a tail you need to use for your bind off. Now keep in mind that the back of the collar needs to be stretchy. So when I did my bind off on the button bands on the fronts, I used my regular tension for binding off. You don't want it to pull in. You don't want it, you want it so that this will lay the way it wants to. See, it's not pulling in. It's not distorted by the bind off. You don't want it to be. But when you get up to the shawl collar, I started a little bit below the V. I bound off. I took a much larger needle. So down here, I was binding off on a three. Up here, I bound off on a US seven. Do you see the sizes of those bind off stitches? See how they're smaller here? and they're bigger here. I don't do any fancy bind off. It's okay, you can if you want. I just use a bigger needle. So this has a lot more stretch to it. Across the back neck. I have seen beautifully knit sweaters that have a collar that turns down like this, that pull in like this, and the person, uh, I had one lady in particular that belonged in our group and she thought she was gonna have to rip the whole collar off and redo it because the whole thing was just bunching in around her neck. And the only problem was that it was bound off too tight. And we're sitting right there, we just took her bind off out and she bound off on a much bigger needle so that it could lay. See how that just lays? That's what you want. You want to be able to just lay, not be pulled in. So as you're binding off, check it uh, because you don't wanna wait till you're all done to find out. See, it's still got some stretch in it. You don't want to wait till you're all done to find out that it's too tight. And again, swatching does help. 
So I think this answers several questions. I think doing it in the Italian um, invisible bind off would be absolutely gorgeous. And I have done that on sweaters before and I like it. But on this particular one for me, because of this, the way I was doing my color work, I wanted to have that gray edge. So I chose to do the standard bind off. Okay, let me go through some more questions. Remember over on the side in the chat area, if you wanna ask me a question that you wanna to answer today during the chat, be sure to preface it by the word question all in capital letters. That way it's easy for me to see, okay? So, this is from Stegart, Stegart. I've been holding off with my knitting, my button band collar. You mentioned something about showing how to do the zipper. Yes, so I just showed Debs. So this applies to you and the collar and the button band. And so that's gonna be all written up. I may get to it today or tomorrow and get that sent out. I do not have the um, hood finished yet. I'm still knitting on that. And, but I can send out how to do the zipper and that the folded back collar like that. So you can choose that. And I'll, I'm gonna use a picture of Deb in my pattern if she allows me to show what it looks like. Okay, and then Susan Marie says, if time allows, I'd be more interested in hearing about favorite books. And yes, I've got some here to share with you. And again, Susan Marie, she says, I have a question on how close we should be to trying to get with our brioche gauge compared to the stockinette gauge. You're never going to get it exactly the same. It just doesn't work out that way. Um, but like I said, on mine, I got within one stitch every couple inches. That's fine. So you could just decrease a stitch in there somewhere because the brioche is what's going to be bigger. It makes bigger stitches. And sometimes it's hard to go down to a small enough size needle. And that has to do with the size of the yarn. You know, um, and this is a whole nother topic, but it's very interesting. And it is, you know, wraps per inch that spinners use. The yarn can only go to a certain size. Let's use this piece of yarn right here. So I've got just an ink pen and I'm just gonna wrap the yarn around the pin and then push it together. You can only push it together so close before it starts piling up on top of itself. That's as close as it's going to get. It's just not gonna get any closer. And it's the same with knitting. With any size of yarn, you can continue going down in needle size, but once you've reached the threshold for how small the stitches will get, no matter how much smaller you go down in needle size, that's as small as those stitches are going to get. So you might get the small, if let's say you're working with bulky yarn, that you would maybe use a 10 and a half needle, you might get the smallest stitches that it's gonna make on a seven. And no matter whether you go down to a one even, those stitches aren't gonna get any smaller than they are on a seven. That's what happens in the brioche knitting, is you get to a point where no matter how much smaller downsize you go in the needle, the stitches won't get any smaller. So that is your limitation. Therefore, you have to adjust your stitch count to make them fit. And it might be one stitch every four inches or, and, or it might be one stitch an inch. Hello, Susan Murray. Glad to see you here. I was just discussing your question. Great. Nancy Drake, Sylvia, and Bonnie just posted her a picture of her sweater on Facebook and where it's blocked. She doesn't have the button band on, but I love it. I love the colors. Okay. Now, next question. Um, this is from JYB Quilter. She says, question about Starry Starry Night, will, the socks. Will you be sharing how to make for ladies large? Yes. In fact, I have already built into the pattern uh, charting for a larger size ankle. And I'll talk to you about the foot too. Yes. This is from Jan Kim Pearl. This is Janet from Fresno. Question for live stream. Can you share your thoughts on doing a tubular bind off on the button band collar when the band has been worked in two by two ribbing or brioche for that matter, pros, cons, technique, e.g. convert to one by ribbing first, work two to four rows in knit one, slip one before you do the bind off, what to do if the yarn wears out, runs out or breaks along the way. I've talked a little bit about that. So, um, you know, true tubular knitting has the um, rows that are worked in double knitting. 
you do work four passes in double knitting, which is equal to two rows. And that is what makes the tube. The actual bind off row, which is like an Italian uh, bind off, is an invisible bind off. And some people call it a uh, Kitchener on one needle. It's the same thing. And if you want to do that, you need to convert to one by one. And the way you do that, let's say you have two by two on your needle. You slip the first stitch to the right needle, point to point. And then with the right needle, you reach in front. I'm sorry, you reach behind and get the uh, next Let me back up two by two. So you slip the first one over and the next one's a pearl. If you knit two pearl through, you need to slip the first stitch to the right needle. Then the next stitch is a knit. The stitch following it is a pearl. You need to transpose the pearl in front of the knit. So that means if you're using doing it without a cable needle, you'll take your right needle behind the knit and insert it into the pearl. Then you'll slide the first knit off, leave the pearl on the right needle, then put that knit back on the left needle. Now you have knit one, pearl one, knit one, pearl one, and you can work those four stitches in the Italian bind off. Um, I think I have a video on this. If I don't, I'll add it to my list. Let me write it down. So that's going to be uh, Italian bind off from knit to purl to. That's an easy video to do. And it looks really nice. And Priscilla Gibson Roberts, in one of her patterns, the uh, bizarre, no, the knee high socks, I'll find it somewhere. I have it printed out. She shows how to do it on one needle, kind of like the uh, Kitchener stitch on one needle. She shows how to do the knit two, purl two, rather than tr transposing the stitches like I'm talking about. She does it by how she sews through the stitches. It's a little more complicated, and it took me quite a while to get it, but it's well worth the effort if you want to try it. I'll make a video on that, too. PGR. PGR bind off. Okay. Next question. This is along the same line. This is MSB. What is your recommended bind off for a brioche button band? Thank you so much. So um, I showed you what mine is, but you can do the Italian bind off or the standard bind off. It's up to you, depends on how you want it to look. I'd try it on your swatch first and see how you like it. They're both um, have about the same amount of stretchiness. So if you compare my cuffs, here's the standard cuff. I'm stretching it out all the way. And I haven't done this before, so let's just see. Here's the one that's the Italian bind off, stretched all the way. Let's see if they're the same. They're the same. And it's just as durable. This is going to, it's it's a durable bind off. It looks good. Now you can easily make this one too tight or too loose or uneven, just as you can a standard bind off. You can make this too tight easily or uneven. It's harder to make it too loose. Not very many people bind off too loose. You have to really work at it to do it too loose. So they're they're both the same durability. I think that they're, this really looks cool. You know, I really like it. But I chose in this instance to do this. I have done this on other sweaters. Okay. This is from C. Cost. This is Charlene from Fresno. Ex where exactly is number four located? Is it the first? Is it on the front raglan increase or the back raglan increase? So the, she's talking about this little scenario here. So here is, let me turn this light off because it's getting too much reflection. Okay. Here's the, sh the sleeve. So she's asking, the number three is here. Is number four here or here? It doesn't really matter. It really doesn't matter. You can do either one. I put it here for this little swatch. So you can see when I knitted straight across the back neck that it turns a little bit when it goes across the top of the sleeve. Do you see that? 
And then I started my short rows up here in the diagonal portion. But you can do it either way. It's okay. It doesn't matter. It's not going to change um, how the fabric's going to look on your back neck. It'll look good either way. Okay. Um, next page. This is from Read Knit, Read Knit Dream. Question, I am using brioche rib for shawl collar. My stockinette stitch gauge is different from the brioche stitch gauge. For the pickup stitches on the back neck between markers number four on left and right, if I pick up one stitch per back neck stitch and knit the brioche stitch, the rib, the collar rib will flare more than the body. Is that expected or okay? Or do we need to pick up based on the stitch ratios of the stockinette or brioche rib? It depends on how much difference you have. If you're having one stitch per inch difference, I would compensate for that, which means that you would skip a stitch on the pickup. If you're having one stitch per four inches difference, that's not going to make any difference. I just pick up every stitch. So it just depends on how much difference you have. And you use your own judgment. Um, I don't think you want it to flare a lot. So one stitch off per inch might be too much because let's say you have seven um, inches across your back neck. That would be seven stitches difference, and that's a lot in brioche knitting. But if it's just maybe two stitches or three stitches, that would be okay. It it's not going to show. You're not going to be able to see it. So that's all the written questions. Let me go through the chatting thing here and pick up questions over here. And then we'll talk about the sock a little more. We'll talk about the next sweater. We'll talk about the books I have here. Question, Marlene Kern, what size needles did you use brioche versus the bind off? Okay, good. For my brioche here, I used a one. I used the same size needle that I used for my knitting, the, the stockinette for the bind off. So I used a three here. But when I got up to the back collar, uh, starting over here at the V right here, I changed to a seven. And that's all you really have to do to change the size of your bind off is to see how nice and stretchy it is, is to change the size of the needle. You don't need to do like Jenny's super stretchy bind off or any of those things. It's just easy to do the standard bind off, just change to a larger needle size. Okay. Roger Abernethy. Hi, Suzanne. I would also like to see the Italian bind off for two by two. Okay. So, I'm today. I already have the one video made for the short rows across the back neck. The I just need to uh, change part of it to make a second video for brioche one color uh, short rows and another one for brioche two color short rows. I can add the uh, bind off, the uh, Italian bind off, converting from knit two purl two to knit one purl one today. Um, I had reserved today as a video day. My grandkids are gone for the day, and I think that I can fit those in, and I feel good and vigorous today. Some days I get really tired, so I think I can get that done. Now, is that everything everybody wants to ask about the eye tag? So I liked when we were talking about what are we going to call the next sweater. I really like eye tag yoke. Okay, so we'll just stick with eye tag yoke. I would like you to use these tags when you post on Ravelry. Tag your uh, projects, and then it's easy for me to find them. A lot of people I know have shared their projects with our group, and I can find them by going to my projects, my pattern page, and looking them up. But it would be cool if you tagged your the current sweater we're working on. Just tag it eye tag then everybody can find it. They can go and look and see everybody's progress. And notice that we have some new people finishing their sweaters and they're gorgeous, like really gorgeous. I can't wait to see some of the color work versions. I haven't seen any of those finished yet, so somebody's gotta be first and those are going to be beautiful. Okay. Vanita Tyal said she had to reduce one stitch per five stitches for her bottom rib. So she'll follow the same, yes, follow the same compensation rate for picking up the back neck. That's perfect. Excellent. Kathy Bruno, question. For the sock knit along, do both the yarns have to be the same? 
No. For example, can I use sock yarns 80% wool, 20% nylon, and for the second coat use 100% wool? The most important thing is they're about the same, close to being the same size. And you can do this test. Yay, that I just showed you. You can wrap your yarns and then just push them together. And that's the wrap per inch. They won't go any closer than that. And check both your yarns. They don't need to be exactly the same, but close. You don't want one necessarily bigger than the other for this particular pattern. Okay? Um, and that's this is a great point because I'm going to bring it up about the sweater for the next sweater, too. So um, you can see how you do the wrap sprints. You don't need a ruler. You don't need anything special. I'm just using an ink pen. Okay, that was a great question. Okay, I tag Y, I tag yoke. That's very good. I tag Y could be the I tag yoke. Excellent. And then you could do this on Instagram and Pinterest and wherever you post your pictures, which helps me. It gets my name out there and people want to know what the I tag is. So let me put this little sample thing up before I get it all messed up. Where to go? Okay, I want to keep that. Okay, so I'm going to show you the socks again, just for those who haven't seen them. These are the next project, the next knit along. All you have to do is purchase the sock pattern, and many of you already have this pattern, so you don't have to do anything. But when you put when you um, start your project page, even if you've already started these socks, but you want to do the knit along, then tag your project page, and I uh, let's put Starry Starry Night. It could be. S S N S starry starry night socks. If you tag it S S N S, then we can see who's doing the knit along versus who's just knitting the socks. Okay, that would be very very fun. And in this particular pattern, um, I do have the wider leg chart, the chart for wider leg. But this is one of those patterns where, you know how I always talk about that you want your fabric that is the most important and you change, um, you get your fabric first and then you make it fit your body. In this particular type of a design, you're going to, to try different needles till you get a fit for your foot. And we'll talk about that in the um, second lesson. The first lesson that's going to come out on Tuesday and. Um, um, Francoise has vo already volunteered. She's already done the pre knit along uh, write up in French. She's going to be doing it in French, and I'll send it to her the day in advance. So I'll send it to her on Monday, and she'll translate it. And so when it comes out on Tuesday, the first lesson, it'll be in English and French. And thank you, Francoise. That's awesome. It's a gift. Thank you. Um, so the first lesson, what we're going to be talking about is how to choose sock yarns, what are appropriate sock yarns, and how to choose two colors that go together. That's the first lesson. So I'll be talking to you about color value and how to do the, tell the difference and how you can use your phone, the camera on your phone, to figure it out, okay? And then what makes a good sock yarn, including the fiber, which has already been asked, 20% nylon, 80% wool versus 100% wool. And the twist and how many uh, plies there are. That's the important part. You want at least three plies for sock yarn and you want a tight twist because when you go to this much work to make a pair of socks, you want them to last. You don't want them to wear out. So what I'm going to be teaching you is how to make them durable as well as beautiful. Okay. Beth Zimmerman, question is Fair Isle a form of stranded knitting? Yes, if you have, I have my trusty whiteboard here that my husband got me. Yay! Okay, so a Venn diagram. The big circle is all of stranded knitting. The little circle inside is Fair Isle. Fair Isle is one type of stranded knitting. These socks are not Fair Isle. They are stranded knitting. 
So, um, and, and I can talk about that too. That could be a good uh, little education to go along with the whole thing. I can tell you how to tell the difference and the different types of stranded knitting. Okay. <laughs> Diana Danko says, do you actually wear those socks? I don't think I could bring myself to. I have worn them a few times, uh, but when I do wear them, I make sure that the shoes I put on are absolutely clean and I never wear them without shoes. In fact, I never wear, um, hello, Demetria, hello. She says she's late, hi. Um, I never wear my socks without shoes, even though I have hardwood floors. See my hardwood floors? Um, I wear my socks in shoes and I don't wear them in my house slippers that are lined with fleece and I don't wear them in Uggs because if you have wool against wool, guess what's gonna happen? They're gonna felt. If you have wool sock against non-wool carpeting, like nylon carpeting or acrylic carpeting or whatever it is they make carpeting out of, Guess what's that? It's not going to felt. It's going to rip the soles off the bottom of your socks eventually. It'll just wear them off. So I wear, I always wear them in shoes. Another thing about making socks that don't wear out is they need to fit your foot. You don't want them too big. If your socks are loose on your foot, they twist and turn and rub and will wear out. If they're too small and your foot is stretching the stitches too far apart, guess what? They will wear out. So that's what I teach you is how to make the sock fit your foot. That's the most important thing. I don't knit socks like this for them to wear out. And I have a lot of stranded socks that I actually do wear all the time. This is, I love knitting stranded socks. It's so fun. Diane Eddy says she wears hers with her Birkenstocks. Yeah, and I have a lot of, um, what are those shoes that you wear that are like clog style? I have a lot of shoes like that where they're just slip-ons and those are what I wear my socks with so you can see the socks, you know? Okay, so I have some other things. I have some books here. This is the first one. This is Charts Made Simple by J.C. Breyer. And charts are one of the things, it's like equivalent to knitters to the word math is to all the rest of the population. Many knitters, I would say probably 90% of knitters or more, when they hear the word charts, their stomach turns because they can't figure them out. This is a great book. JC walks you through how to read charts, how to use them for all the different types of stitch patterns, what the knitting looks like versus the chart. She's very good. She's very literal. JC is a very literal person. So, um, and she makes little roadmaps, see how they're crossing. I love this book. It's great for people who have problems with chart reading. It's also an excellent book for people who want to write patterns because as I showed you in the color work um, sampler that we did last year, each different type of color work, the charts are worked slightly differently. And so um, JC covers all that information here. This is a great book to have in your library. Now, if you have no problem at all with charts, you don't need this book, okay? But if you're one of those people that charts are like, oh, this is a good book. Next is, this is by Margaret Fisher and Margaret Fisher is a master hand knitter. And this book came out quite some time ago. It's been around for a while, 2008. It's seven things that can make or break your sweater. And I teach a lot of this stuff. A lot of the things that we've been covering in this course, the iTag course, are in this book. Um, the things she talks about, the table of contents, cast on edge. Remember I talk, I show you, we talked about not casting on too tight. Um, increasing in ribbing. We talked about increasing in ribbing. Slanting decreases, remember we talked about that, which way do they go and which ones do you want to use and the effect that it's going to have. Uh, blocking, notice she does blocking next and then picking up stitches for bands. Remember how we did that too? We blocked first and then you pick up the stitches for the bands and then she talks about buttonholes. So this is a great book. Margaret Radcliffe is a, a very awesome, I mean, Margaret Fisher. I'm sorry, I said the wrong last name. Margaret Fisher is a very, very nice lady, very approachable. If you go to any of the Stitches events, she's usually there and she's willing to talk to you. She's a very, very nice lady. In fact, 
She's probably one of the ones that I can do on the live interviews, which I'll talk more about that in a minute too, because she's a friend of mine. We could do that. Very cool. Okay, the last one I want to show you. This is by Ann Bud also, and it's called The Knitter's Handy Guard to guide to yarn requirements and it actually used to be an app for the iphone but it's not anymore i don't know what happened you can check on your androids and see it's called uh, knit handy that's the app it's called knit handy and you used to be able to put it right on your phone but it's not available any for more for iphone i don't know whether it didn't get updated with the new ios or what's happened but this is um charts it's just charts of how much yarn you need. So you it's just like the book we've been using. You pick up, you figure out your stitch gauge, you figure out the size you wanna make, and she tells you how much yarn you need. And she tells you for mittens, gloves, socks, tams, scarves, hats, sweaters, and vests. Um, so I, I, you can see mine's well-worn. It's something that I keep in my knitting bag. And it's the same numbers that she uses in her books. So, um, You'll know, remember when we first started the iTag sweater and we figured out how much yardage we were going to need and we uh, gave you two options and you could do both of them. One is you could figure it out by your gauge and figuring out the square inches of your schematic. Remember we did that? Or you could just use what Ann Bud says to use. So look and see now that some of you are finishing your sweaters. Did that work out? Did you have the right amount of yarn? Did Ann Bud's book tell you the right amount of yarn? Did the way that we figured it out mathematically tell you the right amount of yarn? If it did, then you can know that you can start trusting those numbers. Um, if not, then you need to look back and see, did you make a mistake in your calculations or how you used it? So, Kathy Trajoy... Tra Trakowska, I don't know how to say your name. You should need, send me a phonetic um, spelling so I can say it correctly. She says, I'm not fond of nor very good at math. Interestingly, she prefers charts. So let me tell you something that I have found in all of the classes that I've taught. I've taught a lot of people how to knit from scratch. And almost always when we start talking about gauge and numbers, their eyes just glaze over. You can just see them. They're like, or deers in the headlight. Um, but what I have found that people that really like knitting and they'll say, I don't like math or I'm not good at math or I never got it. Um, they get it when it's related to knitting. And I think what it is, is all of our brains work differently. And when we're in elementary school and they're teaching us math, they teach us one way. And if your brain doesn't get it, then you're not good. But it's not that you're not good. It's that they didn't teach you in a way that you could get it. So when it comes down to knitting and you like knitting and you're getting it, I know that your brain understands math because knitting is math. If you like to knit, your brain gets the math. It's just that nobody ever taught it to you in a way that you could get it. And math is a visual. Kathy's saying definitely visual. Math is a very visual thing. For me, my brain gets math, but it's because I can see it. It is visual. I can see it in my mind, what is happening with the quantities. I can visualize the quantities and how to manipulate them to make them work out. Okay, so let me see if there are any other questions up here, and we'll talk a little bit more. Okay, so over uh, this, uh, what day is this? On Friday, I think, this is Sunday. On Friday, a friend of mine who lives here in Bakersfield, Kathy Mashburn, we figured out how to um, do a live stream and invite somebody and have them show up on the screen with me. Now, what we're using is called Google Hangouts. And for me, it's the easiest. I don't have to buy any special software or hardware or anything. What it does, though, is it shows one person little down in the bottom of the screen, but you can flip it back and forth. You can make that, when that person's talking, you can make them big. And when I'm talking, make me big, and they go down to little. So I'm going to try that. I'll experiment it with it with Charles. And it would be a live stream just like this, only Charles and I would both be on here at the same time, Charles Gandy. And we can experiment 
and you can ask questions of Charles and he would be able to answer your questions. So um, I'm really thinking that this is going to be fun. So I'm going to do Charles first and we'll work out the kinks with Charles. And then I'll do Arenda, who is the uh, president of the Knitting Guild Association. And you can ask her questions live. And then I'm thinking around the 1st of March, when we start the next sweater knit along, the iTag yoke, um, I'll have Ann Bud on. Wouldn't that be fun? We can do Ann Bud, and you can ask her questions about her book. Then um, we could have Margaret Fisher. I can think of an endless number of people that I could have on here to interview where you actually can ask them questions live. And I don't think anybody else does that. I know that there are podcasts where people interview people, but there's nobody that does it I know of that is live. So we'll see how that goes. If you don't like it, we'll stop doing it. We'll see if you like it versus don't like it. You are my audience and I cater to you. So I'm doing this for you. You have to let me know, Do you? is this the, the path that you want me to take or not? Hello, Ruth. How are you? So I want to show you some experimenting that I've been doing on my next sweater. So this is not a gauge swatch. These are just color, uh, playing around with color. You know, I want to use that yellow is my primary color. And I got my, I had those different colors that I showed you last time. So this is with the red, this is the green, this is the uh, Zauber ball that'll change different colors. I have yet to do the blue and this green. Um, and I'm thinking I might change my yellow to this. It's a slightly different, it's a little more buttery yellow and I have enough of this yellow also. But what I wanted to talk about, remember was one of, somebody asked about, um, Susan Marie, I'll answer you in just a second. Somebody asked for the sock um, if you could use two different yarns. Yes, as long as they're the same weight. But in this sweater, no, you can have different. If you want to do color work, they do not have to be the same weight in the sweater. For the sock, yes, because it needs to fit your foot a certain way. But the sweater, there's much more room for variability. So this yellow is actually DK weight. The red is fingering. The green is DK and the black is DK. But look how the difference is on this side. Not much, is there? The red's a little bit smaller. And I did the, um, a, I, what did I do? Oh, I did that crazy waitress cast on down here for this. Now, what did I do? I did a different cast. I don't remember what it was. I was experimenting, but it looks okay, but it doesn't have as much stretch as I'd like. Um, but anyway, you can see that the weight of yarn doesn't make much difference on this side. This is where the yellow is the dominant. On this side, it does. The red, it's hard to see, but it is smaller. The green's a little bigger. You can definitely see that the black is bigger um, than the red. But another thing that I found is um, how much color contrast is there? You would think that red and yellow would have a lot of contrast. On this side, they seem to. But really, when I did the black and white photo on it, it was kind of a medium uh, contrast. The black and white, the black and yellow is about equivalent to black and white. Yes, that's very, very high contrast and it looks good. But on this sweater, it doesn't necessarily have to be high contrast. It just has to be eye appealing to you. So I'll talk more about that. And I, again, this is not a gauge swatch. I'm not using this. I will knit them. Once I figure out the color combination I want to use and the stitch pattern I want to use, then I'm going to do a much larger gauge swatch. Right now, I'm just playing around with different colors. For example, I might make the whole sweater yellow, but add the red in the yoke, which I think could look really cool. So if, this whole, if the yoke is like this, and the whole sweater were yellow and I added the red up here, it'd be very pretty, put some red on the cuffs, red around the bottom, that could look very sharp. So now is a good time just to play around and experiment, okay? Um, let's see. Susan Marie, question. So you're interviewing Charles this Friday. 
no, because I'm not doing a live stream on Friday. What's Friday? Is he going to be somewhere? What's happening on Friday? Tell me what's going on on Friday, and then I'll give you a better answer. I was thinking about interviewing him on a Wednesday or a Sunday um, on my regular uh, live streaming time. Then Susan Marie also says, awesome news about the iTag yoke. I was thinking sport weight for the main color and fingering for the stranded. Oh, I mentioned something about Friday. You know, don't trust what comes out of my mouth. Think, I don't know. I say wacky things and I don't know why. Maybe, who knows? I'm getting old, but um, I hate to think that. But, you know, it's going to happen to everybody. So it'll be on a Wednesday or a Sunday. I don't think I would set it up for this Wednesday, but maybe, um, oh yeah, I talked to Charles. Yes. So um, it was so, yeah, with disregard Friday. I'll give you advance warning. I'll post it on Facebook um, and in the Ravelry group. So that's where I let people know what's going on. And when I set up this thing where you get notification in advance about the live stream, um, I'll say that Charles, I'm going to be interviewing Charles. So you'll get a few hours notice. Allison Downey just joined us. She said, hi, Suzanne. I just found this stream by accident. I love it. Hi, everyone else. I am Swansea, Wales, UK. Hi. Hello, Allison. Hope you come back and join us again. Does anybody else have any other questions? Let me see. Was there anything else I was going to show you? I think that's everything I have today. I'm going to get off here. I have a lot of work to do. Okay. Francoise, question. Could you please explain when you use two circular needles for knitting in the round, you said in a thread that you don't use the same size for the four tips. How do you manage them? That's a great question. So let's say that you have interchangeable needles, right? And you only have two tips for each size, correct? So if you have a needle, I don't have any of my needles in here. I don't have any extra needles in here. Okay, let's just use this as an example. Let's say this is your needle. There's a cable where my hand is, and this is one end, and this is the other of your cable needle, right? The, the cable is here. Let's say you want to knit with a size four, and you need two circular needles because you're doing a small diameter knitting, right? You could put your size four here and a size three here. The same thing on the other cable needle. Put size four and size three, and then you use the size four to knit off of the size three. So your needle's gonna curve around, right? So when you're using a cable needle, so here's your cable, this part's the size four, this is the size three. So you knit off of the three until you use all those stitches and you pick up the other needle, the size four in your hand, and you knit off of the three. Does that make sense? Okay. Susan Marie, question, did you side on buttons for your raglan? Yes, I'm going to make those dorset buttons and I'm going to use the yarn from my sweater. So they'll be the gray and the orange. And um, if I can find a bead maybe to put right in the center, I don't know. So yes, I'm going to make those and, and that'll be a video when I make those too. Okay. Anything else? Are you all having a good time? I'm so excited. Give me thumbs up, thumbs up. I'm so excited to see that um, people are finishing their sweaters. And did you see that the one lady, and I'm, I'm sorry, I don't have your name if you're on here, that she's finished two, one for her daughter and one for herself. And they are both just beautiful. And I love how everybody's sweater and the fabric looks so nice. Aren't you happy with the fabric? how they hang and the drape and how it fits on your body. It's just wonderful. And the one that uh, Deb made, and I'm sure she's probably still on here. What did I do with her picture? Oh, here's her picture. This one. I don't think she'll be upset for me saying this, but you know, this fits her so nice. And it hangs so well. And she made, she did this out of a bulky yarn because the last sweater she did with me, she chose fingering. And um, she got uh, burnt out on it before she got far enough. And there were some issues with the particular yarn she was using. 
But so this one she chose bulky because she really wanted to finish the sweater in a timely fashion. It's almost finished. She just needs to measure from here to here and go online and buy a custom zipper. Now I told you about that before, right? You can buy custom zippers. So don't try to fit your sweater to a zipper. Instead, fit the zipper to your sweater. It takes a few days to get it in the mail, but it's worth waiting on because then it will fit your sweater perfectly. Um, anything else? I like the live streams too. Bonnie Davis says, love these live streams. I feel like we're all having a group conversation, even though I'm the only one that's talking, but you guys are, are giving me the, the information to talk about. Carlotta, hello. Anything else? Now be sure to tag your things if you want, if you're going to do the, if you're doing the I tag, add I tag to it because then everybody knows you did it in the knit along. But of course, everybody that did it was in the knit along. Um, when you start the socks, it's uh, S starry, starry night sock, S S N S. And the new one will be I tag Y, I T A G Y, I tag yoke. Okay. And you can start picking your yarn for your sweater. Uh, if you use Ann Bud's book, you can just, you know, go to um, where to buy zippers. Let me look it up real quick. I, I'm online here. Let me look up custom zippers. Okay. Zippers for less. Custom zippers. Quote. Zipper shipper. Custom zippers. I think this is the one that I bought them from before. I'll plug it in. Uh, yes. This one looks good. It's in the United States, but for people outside of the United States, I'm sure you can find something too. I plugged it in there. So there's a link. Um, Elaine says, thank you for all you do. You go above and beyond. We all appreciate it. Thank you. I appreciate you because you know what? I'm learning from you. You make me a better teacher. You help me learn how to communicate with more people and to present my materials so that more people can understand it. That's not easy to do. And I know I goof up and make mistakes and people don't get some of the things that I think are easy and they don't come across well, but you help me because I go back and redo it and fix it up. Okay. You guys good? I'm good. It's 52 minutes. We almost made our hour. And, um, oh, and this is something to think about. I don't know if this is, is, is premature, but someday we should have like a, a get together somewhere, somehow figure out how we could do a get together for the, all the regular people. I think that would be fun. It might have to be online. I don't know. But it's just something it's maybe it's wishful dreaming. You know, I, I don't know, but we'll think about it. So anyway, you guys have a great day. I'm going to get off. I'm going to finish up my videos that I have started and get them out to you today. And I'll see you live on Wednesday at noon Pacific time. In the meantime, the sock tutorial is going to come out on Tuesday on January 15th. It'll come out once a week and it shouldn't take all that long. You know, you should have one sock finished within five weeks. Okay. If not sooner. And if you do two at a time, you most likely have two socks done within five weeks. So that's not a huge, huge thing like a sweater, but the skills you're going to learn, you'll be able to use in any sweater, including the yoke sweater that's coming up. If you haven't done stranded knitting before, this is a good time to learn it on a small project. And then you can use what you learn on your iTag yoke. Yay! Okay. Happy knitting. Talk to you later. Have a great day.